Hey folks, and welcome to CarStar's 10 Wild Facts about the 86 Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo and the 1987 John Hughes movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And also, Happy Thanksgiving to everyone who celebrates it. Fact number one. There were six different cars built to portray the fictional branded 1986 model Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo convertible car in the film. Folks could easily get in a heated debate on what exactly this car is. Some will swear up and down that it's just a Chrysler LeBaron Town and Country, and others will argue that it's a Dodge 600. Well, the reality is that both would be equally right and wrong, because this eyesore of an automobile is actually a hodgepodge of parts from both the base model Chrysler LeBarons and Dodge 600s merged together. And just to reiterate, none of the cars used were actually the more rare town and country version of the LeBarons themselves, but were just standard base LeBarons and Dodge 600s, detailed to look similar to the town and country model, using the same trim and other styling cues. Chrysler didn't want association of any kind with the film, since the cars were planned to be progressively destroyed throughout the movie. So the cars were built with the intention to be ambiguous to viewers under a fictional model name, emblems, and hood ornament to throw people off a bit. Fact number two. These LeBaron slash Dodge 600 creations were powered by stock four-cylinder turbo engines sending around 100 horsepower to the front wheels through a three-speed automatic transaxle. Although certainly no powerhouse, it at least had enough power and traction to pull itself out of a snowdrift and launch right through the front of a motel lobby to the surprise of the Dell and Neil characters. Ah uh, yes, front wheel drive can be fun to play with in the snow for sure. Fact number three. The Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo borrows its purposely unattractive metallic pea green color choice and tacky wood grain style paneling directly from another John Hughes written film movie car. You guessed it, the extra uglified family truckster from the 1983 movie, Vacation. John Hughes provided a lot of input on how both the family truckster from Vacation and the Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo appeared, and of course was also the one who chose that custom pea green color for both as well. And they certainly achieved the desired goal of making both of these cars so god-awful ugly that they were flamboyantly comical on their own, even without the actors. Fact number four. The closest straight from the factory car that one could buy to the fictional Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo is indeed a real 1986 Chrysler LeBaron Town and Country Convertible, but good luck finding one of those. And I say that because there was only 501 1986 LeBaron Town and Country Convertibles ever produced, making them an exceptionally rare car today. Despite their rarity, however, these models usually don't breach the 20k mark when they do come up for resale, due to the lack of popularity of the second generation LeBarons and Dodge 600s in general. Fact number five. Along with many other rare vehicles, Lee Iacocca owned a 1986 LeBaron town and country convertible that remained in his collection up until his passing in 2019. In January of 2020, some of Lee's personal car collection was sold at a Bonhams auction in which his LeBaron convertible was sold for a respectable $19,040. Most remember Lee from his early career working at Ford, birthing the very popular Ford Mustang, but we mustn't forget he later became the CEO of Chrysler in 1979, putting his car design expertise to work and rescued Chrysler from nearly going out of business. So it makes sense that he owned a number of Chrysler cars as well, probably the most notable of which which was sold at that same auction was his personal 1992 Dodge Viper which was the very first production Dodge Viper to roll off the assembly line, aka Viper number 001 as they referred to it, which sold for an impressive $285,000. Fact number six. At the height of the film's production, the studio had actually purchased every bit of the available stock that Chrysler had of the town and country model's exclusive wooden style trim. The vast majority of the extra parts purchased for the cars, including the wood style trim, was purchased from the Claude Short Dodge dealership in Santa Monica, California. And of course when watching the film, it becomes very apparent of just why they needed so much of that wood style trim for capturing these kinds of wild scenes. I bet the set mechanics got really tired of trying to keep all the trim attached to those cars, as they just kept getting beat up more and more as the film progressed. Fact number seven. 
As some could probably tell from the steering wheel design, the majority of the interior close-ups were from one of the Dodge 600s, as well as the vehicle manual that we get a short glimpse of in the glove compartment. However, the famous interior scene portraying Dell and Neil's battles with the reclining seat was indeed a mock-up set, as neither the LeBaron or the 600 had power control reclining built into the seats. Of course, even if these models had a power controlled reclining seat option, it would never be quite this powerful or erratic with all the side to side movements and extreme forward and back angles. But this prop assisted and heavily exaggerated scene was certainly hilarious indeed and made one very memorable moment for viewers, so we'll excuse the unrealisticness of this one in the name of comedy, I suppose. Fact number eight. As one might expect, due to the lack of popularity of the second generation LeBaron and Dodge 600s, there just aren't many replicas of the Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo out there. In fact, the only decent example I could find at all was this 1983 LeBaron base replica. It may be about the only public one we've seen so far, but it was done impressively well and even includes a replica prop of Dell's suitcase to top it off. It's quite apparent that a lot of work went into putting this replica together, so there's at least one very dedicated fan of the car out there. This fine replica sold at a Barrett-Jackson auction in 2019 for only $11,000. Fact number 9! Out of the six customized LeBaron slash Dodge 600 model cars built for the film, only one of them survived and made it out into the public after. The lone survivor of LeBaron was fixed up and repainted back to the factory cream color after the film and was then sold to a private buyer residing in Los Angeles where the car was last known to have been seen. So, if you happen across a cream-colored 86 LeBaron convertible with the town and country wood-style trim and Dodge 600 taillights running around LA, that very well could be it. Fact number 10. As for scale model versions of the Grand Detroit Farm and Country Turbo, at present there are no companies making a model kit or diecast model of the car, unfortunately. In fact, there aren't even any model kits or diecast versions of the second generation Chrysler LeBaron or Dodge 600 cars available at all. The closest diecast model out there I could find to it was this rare and out of retail circulation third generation 143rd scale 1990 LeBaron convertible from a brand called Neo. However, oddly enough, there are a few decent quality 124 scale first generation Chrysler LeBaron town and country diecast models available from a brand called Motormax, if anyone is interested in older LeBarons that look even more like the Vacation Family Truckster. I will put a link in the description where you can get those first generation LeBaron diecast models at least for anyone who's interested. And for those who haven't seen it yet, I have recently created my own diecast car channel named Show and Tell Diecast that I display in detail my diecast models that I now add videos to weekly also. I will include the link to the new channel in the video description below as well for those interested. And again, have a very happy Thanksgiving this Thursday, everyone. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching, and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time.